Hi, my name's Anna Pendrich, and I'm going to talk to you about installing WebSphere Service Registry and Repository version 8 and getting it set up with Business Space so that all of the endpoints are working correctly. I'm going to focus really on uh, if you've used a clustered environment here, possibly with, with a load balancer over the top there, um, maybe with a prefix on your WSRR, um, because if you've just installed a standalone version, these things should be just set up for you from the install. There was an option in the install to say, set up business space for me, and, and that should all be working well. Uh, but, if, but if you've done a more complicated install, then you'll need to go and check some things and make sure they're set as you would like them to be. The demonstration is assuming that what you've done is you've installed business space and you've installed WSRR, uh, remembering that you can only have one instance of business space per cell in your in your WAS cluster. Um, you've installed your load balancer if you're using one of those, and, and now you're ready to just set the endpoints to be the right things. You'll need to set both some REST endpoints and some WebSphere environment variables. The first thing we're going to look at here are the, are the REST endpoints. So these are covered in uh, an information centre page. I'll just pop over there to have a look. Uh, it's in the configuring REST endpoint section under the configuring business space after you've installed it. Bit. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll just kind of go through the instructions that are given here. It tells you the the, the endpoints to to change and, and where to look for them. So I will go and do that now. If you've used the dynamic install guide to, to go through your install, these, these settings will also have been mentioned on pages in there. To set the REST endpoints, we'll use the WebSphere Application Server Administrative Console for the Service Registry Deployment Manager. So we'll go into Resources, the Resource Environment, the Resource Environment Providers, and then from here we'll go to the Mashups, Mashups Endpoints. and then into custom properties. So the list of the custom properties shows us a large number of endpoints, but we only need to look at four. And the first one I need to look at, if I scroll down, is this WSRR server ID URL. It's set to slash WSRR by default. But we need to update this so it takes into account the load balancer, the protocol that we want to use, and the prefix that I've added to WSA. So I need to update this value. So I just copied that in to save a bit of typing. Um, but you can see that I've chosen HTTPS as my protocol here, the secure one. I've got the details of the, the host name of my load balancer and then the port that matches the protocol that I selected before. So I've got the secure one of 443. And then I've added pre-01 as a prefix to my wizard. So I've got that information all contained in the value now need to save those changes so if I apply those and then save them to the configuration there are three other endpoints that you'll need to update as well that are mentioned in the information center pages there so where we've updated this first one here of of was a server ID URL the other ones that you'll need to update a WSA server feeds ID URL. I've already updated this one just to save a little bit of time here. So again, the protocol, the host name, matching port number, and then if you've got a prefix, you'll need to include that. And then the others are on the next page. So the other two that you'll need to look at are WSA report viewer URL, same as same again, and BERT report URL. So you need to update that one too. Once you've updated all of the variables and, and you've made sure that they've been saved to the master of the configuration, you'll need to, if it's a standalone server that you are running on, you'll just need to restart that server. If it's a cluster, you'll need to synchronize all of the nodes in the cluster to make sure everything picks up the changes. Uh, you can also just check that your URLs are correct. So in this tab here, I've just put the URL that, that I set, the, there was a server ID2 at the first at the first bit here that I showed you. So if I just go here, we can see that there's some information coming back from WSA. So once that's all done and you're happy with the settings there, you'll need to go and also update some other variables. So if you're using a cluster, then you will need to change some en WebSphere environment variables. These ones are detailed again in the information center or they'll come up in your instructions in the dynamic install guide if you're using that. This is the section about configuring an HTTP server for business space and WSRR. There's a couple of steps in particular that this is 
talking about, which is uh, these optional steps three and step four about setting the environment variables. So to update your WebSphere environment variables, in the administrative console, you'll need to go to environment. And then down to the WebSphere ones. I've been here before and I have already uh, set my scope to just the ones that are about my, my cluster that I'm interested in here. So the first thing the instructions tell me to do is add a WSRR endpoint URL absolute variable and set that one to true because by default it will be using a relative path and we want to use it an absolute one. So I just click new, add the variable name and set it to true. Now I'll just need to save this. So you can see I've got my new variable here. If the variable was already there, you just need to check that it's set to true. Next, you need to check the WSRR endpoint URL prefix. By default, it will be set to an arbitrary member of the cluster. Um, so you'll need to update this so that it will point at your low balancer instead if you're, if you're using one of those. So in my case, I just need to change the port number because I have my low balancer on the same machine as the, that I've got WSRR installed. So just again, save that and then check that it's updated. And there's one other variable that's just worth having a look at. Make sure you're happy with the, the value. It's wizard instance prefix. So as I mentioned before, I've got a prefix on my WSRR install of pre01, and that's mentioned here. So I'm happy with all of these settings, and I've got them all saved. Once your updates are all complete, you'll need to synchronize the cluster and, and restart wizard to make sure that all of the changes have been picked up and are there across your whole cluster. Also, if you've been using business space and people have already logged into that, before they log in again, they'll need to clear their browser cache so that the new endpoints that we've set will be picked up next time they log into business space. The final thing we'll do is just go and have a look at business space and show that it loads happily now. I had already updated my cluster in the background. So you can see you've logged on and there are no errors, everything's looking good, so I've got everything set up correctly. Thanks for your time. I hope that helps you with setting up your endpoints and environment variables when installing WSRR with Business Space.